Well, hey there folks, it's Dr. Franklin, and this is a mini lecture dealing with online focus groups. In this lecture, I will be providing a definition for focus groups in social behavioral research. After I do that, I will discuss perceived benefits and drawbacks of focus groups. Following that, I'll have a brief discussion about asynchronous focus groups versus synchronous focus groups. And then finally, as has been customary in previous video lectures, I will talk about research design considerations as it relates to online focus groups. Focus groups are carefully planned discussions held with six to 10 individuals designed to get a subject of interest in a permissive and non-threatening manner. It's a research strategy that is used by researchers from a variety of fields because it allows for deeper understanding of topics and perspectives from individuals pre-selected on some type of attribute. For example, individuals that are senior managers could elect to become a part of a focus group. Adolescents could be a part of a focus group, smokers, Christians, etc. The data collected during focus groups is a result of group members interacting with each other, and it's not simply a group in which individuals state their opinions. Because of this, there are critics of focus groups who believe that the co-presence of peers heightens social desirability and group norms that may lead to inhibition and passive agreement with the group position. In a nutshell, some are critical of focus groups because it's thought that participants' remarks may not be what they really want to say, but instead may arise from conformance, censoring, coercion, conflict avoidance, or plain fickleness. Despite the critics, focus groups has allowed researchers to gain a rich understanding of thinking, language, and social reality of participants. An online focus group can be defined as a selected group of individuals who have volunteered to participate in a moderated, structured online discussion to explore a topic, plain and simple. Online focus groups can be synchronous as well as asynchronous. Now, there is much debate in regard to online focus groups as far as how many people should participate, how long it should last, what type of moderation should be used, and what type of internet-mediated communication should be used some of which we'll touch on later. As with other online methods, there are no right or wrong answers for every situation, but instead a number of factors that should be taken into consideration, such as cost, anonymity, dropout, potentiality, and loss of nonverbal and vocal cues in text-based communication. Broadly speaking, there are two types of online focus groups and they are synchronous online focus groups and asynchronous focus groups. Synchronous online focus groups involve interaction between participants in real time with individuals present at the same time. Asynchronous online focus groups could involve participants interacting at different times and not necessarily temporally present. Different interactions result from these focus groups and researchers should choose their preference based on their study aims and purposes. I'll start by discussing asynchronous focus groups. Research participants involved in asynchronous focus groups may enjoy the benefit of focusing more on the content of their message versus managing the conversation. Once the time pressure is eliminated, folks, then more cognitive resources can be utilized focusing on how to communicate sensitive, personal, intimate, or otherwise meaningful information. Researchers may also benefit from the alleviation of time pressure to focus on managing the conversation by reflecting on proper follow-up questions, ensuring that they are interpreting the participants' remarks correctly, and iteratively moving from interpretation of content to management of the discussion, which increases the likelihood of obtaining robust findings. It should be noted that asynchronous focus groups are not without critics, given that some believe that because individuals are not interacting at the same time, the spontaneity aspect of conversation, which can bring about novel insights, is lost. The researchers should weigh the importance of spontaneous interaction with the context of their research study. Discussion forums are accessed via websites and provide group participants the ability to interact using a tree-like structure where different topics and subtopics can be addressed. Individuals can post and or respond to peers by creating new threads or branches of the tree-like structure. 
In terms of access to discussion board forums, sometimes individuals must register with the website or the platform. This could have a tremendous benefit to the researcher as it will allow them to gain background information about the participants, maintain the right group composition, and track the number of participants involved in the forum. The users may like the idea of registering because the process typically allows participants to create a username that will provide them some anonymity if discussing some sensitive topics. One of the challenges that the moderator will face is ensuring that participants stay engaged given the benefit of no immediate time pressure. To this end, it may be best for the moderator to keep the group size relatively small so that they can keep track of the number of participants who are engaging. You know, email distribution lists are another way to conduct online focus groups. And there are some researchers that view this as a more of a group interview rather than a focus group technique. Participants email a central email address their responses, and then the moderator sends out a digest or all of the communication received with some possible follow-up questions. Email distribution lists have the benefit of determining that the intended recipients or privileged people receive correspondence, but the drawback is that it is less visually appealing than a discussion board form. Now let's spend some time and talk about synchronous online focus groups. These types of focus groups have a lot in common with face-to-face -face focus groups, and they are typically conducted at a prearranged time. Participants have the opportunity to react to others' comments in real time, and this can really facilitate the conversation and at times be downright chaotic. I will briefly discuss three types of synchronous online focus groups, and they include the following, text-based chat rooms, text-based virtual reality, and voice slash video. Text-based chat rooms operate much like discussion board forums in that participants will respond to questions posed by the moderator on a website. Uh, it differs from a discussion board forum though because it doesn't have the same tree-like structure with subtopics. Most chat rooms require registration and this could have the same benefits that platforms like discussion board forums have. Text-based virtual reality online focus groups, that's a mouthful, involves individuals creating avatars to interact in a 3D space with the moderator. An example of a platform that could potentially be used for an online focus group is Second Life. This type of online focus group has the added benefit of requiring an individual to physically and textually be present in a space to interact. Additionally, in some platforms, participants have the option of manipulating facial features so that the moderator could have a better idea of how participants are responding to remarks. Finally, a big benefit of this type of space is that the moderator can control the environment where the online focus group is held by setting up a space in advance that is warm, friendly, and welcoming, apart from malls and other venues that could serve as distractions and face-to-face -face opportunities. By way of using chat features, the moderator can ask questions and get text-based response in 3D worlds. Finally, video slash voice online focus groups have much of the same benefits as a face-to-face -face focus group, and there are a variety of platforms that will allow researchers proper privacy settings. Some video slash voice platforms even afford moderators blended text, voice, and video discussions. Regardless of which type of online focus group a researcher elects to use, there are a number of key research design considerations that should be worked into one's process. The first issue I will address deals with the number of focus group participants. Though there is no upper limit in terms of the number of participants for an online focus group, many researchers elect to retain the sample size for their online focus group that is comparable to that of a face-to-face -face focus group. The range of persons included in online focus groups can range from three group participants to 57 participants. The researchers should keep in mind that the aim of their study should be the primary focus and the level of interaction required should be an additional focus when trying to make a decision as to how many participants to have in the study. For example, if a researcher is interested in getting personal, intimate, and sensitive information, they may elect to keep the group small. However, if they were looking to gain an understanding of trends and information across larger groups of individuals, then more participants would make sense. 
A second issue to consider is how long the focus group should be. An asynchronous focus group can range from one to 24 weeks with the mean duration of nine weeks. Now, it should be noted that focus groups that go up to 24 weeks is rare, and really and truly, the average duration of most focus groups is probably four weeks. With that being said, there are a number of factors to take into consideration as far as length, such as the questions in the protocol guide, uh, how the group will be structured, and the specific research questions underpinning the work. Next, I would like to address the consideration of participants. There may be good reasons to keep the sample size small, and one of those reasons is that it will reduce the amount of content that participants have to read to participate in an asynchronous discussion board forum. It's extremely important to choose a platform that's familiar to the participants to ensure that the learning curves are short and ideally non-existent so relevant information as it connects to your topic of interest can be gleaned. Researchers should think about factors such as gender, age, cultural background, and anything that may influence how a group can be recruited and how they can be properly incentivized to sustain motivation to participate across the length of time. Additionally, these factors that impact one's ability to access the internet should be taken into consideration. Fourthly, I want to spend some time discussing the online environment. The focus group moderator should strive to make the online environment warm and welcoming. The moderator can do this by offering a personalized introductory video that helps participants get to know the moderator, and they can offer a video about how to use specific features of the platform. If possible, users or participants in the online focus group should be granted the opportunity to personalize their online experience. In terms of the platform, the researcher should only include on the site information which is absolutely necessary to disseminate for the purposes of the focus group. Now let's discuss technology issues. Researchers should be aware of the participants technological expertise and provide guides or at the least an option for the users to experiment with the platform and ask any questions should they arise. If possible, the researcher should select a platform with which the users have some familiarity. Researchers need to think and plan for every eventuality and have a number of solutions for the technical issues that could crop up uh, because you don't want to deter your participants from focusing on the focus group. <laughs> Lastly, in terms of the moderation of focus groups, it is important that the researchers establish expectations at the outset of a synchronous or asynchronous focus group. Participants need to know when, how, and how frequently they should be interacting in the online focus group. It is also important for the moderator to be present in the discussion forum as this will ensure that it is not an impersonal experience. Using first names may be appropriate as this will help to make the online environment warm and welcoming. It may also be worth considering folks, two moderators to handle the dual task of troubleshooting any communication or technical issues. Finally, if using an asynchronous platform, it may be helpful to summarize the gist of what has been said should a user not have a time uh, to read the comments of all of their peers. A researcher should consider the online software package that will be used for the online focus group. There are a number of free software packages and subscription fee-based packages that vary based on functionality, the number of discussion board forms one can maintain, the number of administrators that can moderate the discussion, and the number of participants that can participate in the discourse. These options should be explored to ensure the best experience for researcher and prospective participants.